Well, if you're looking for a form of transport that's a little less exciting than a paramotor, then what about a more tranquil journey along our canals? British waterways have always been a great place to get away from everything, even in the middle of our biggest cities. But if it hadn't been for a small group of dedicated enthusiasts, the canals that we know and love today could have disappeared forever. Today, Britain's canals are in pretty good shape. They're picturesque and widely enjoyed. I feel like Captain Pogwash. But it wasn't always like this. It seems unthinkable now, but 60 years ago, these canals were branded real eyesores. The government didn't have a clue what to do with them, and some of them were even filled in. They were saved by the dedication of a few tireless campaigners, and Sonia Rolt was one of them. Today, her passion for the waterways remains as strong as ever. They are free. They are open. You may walk with your pack on your back through hundreds of miles, and everybody can. For Sonia, it all started in London in the 40s. After answering a newspaper advert, she came to work on the waterways as part of the war effort. Sonia was one of the many women who became known as the Barge Girls. Her job was to crew boats like this, carrying goods from Birmingham to London on the Grand Union Canal. What was it like being a Barge Girl? You had a very th thrilling time in many ways. You went down into the big dock and there were the high sides and there were the cranes above and there was the lock into the great flowing river. So it was dramatic indeed. But some of the waterways no longer do a job of work. Yet it wasn't long before Sonia realised the canals were in peril. They'd once played a major role in transporting industrial cargo. But the railways and roads had taken over and the canals were now in terminal decline. This is my first time on a boat and I must say it's a lovely way to travel. But just how bad were the canals after the war? Well, after the war, the, the canals were in a very precarious state because they'd outlived their commercial usefulness and they hadn't yet found a role in what we now regard as the leisure industry. Uh, so really, they, they had really no future at all at that time. They were in a very dangerous position. As for the government, it wasn't just ignoring the canals. In some cases, it was actively destroying them. The locks that we're in now uh, had the balance beam sawn off, uh, the paddle gear was smashed. I think they, they regarded them then, and I think they regard them now as something of a millstone around their neck, and if they could get rid of them, then it was something less to worry about. To have any chance of survival, the canals needed a saviour. It turned out to be Tom Rolt. Tom had spent a year travelling the waterways of the Midlands and wrote all about it in a book called Narrowboat. The canals can play their part, not only as a means of transport and employment, but as a part of an efficient system of land drainage and a source of beauty and pleasure. But if left to the mercies of economists and planners, the last of them will become a weedy, stagnant ditch and the bright boats will be left to rot at the wharves. So tell us about Tom Rolt's book and what impact did it have? Well, the book Narrowboat, uh, although we had a lot of trouble getting it published in the first place, was very widely read when it was published. And the interesting thing is it was read by, if you like, all the right people. And it, it brought together the, the founding members, the people who became the founding members of the England Water Association. And had it not have been for the formation of the IWA, uh, I think we can safely say that we wouldn't have the canal system that we have today. So if it wasn't for Tom Rolt, would we be sitting now on a narrow boat? No, we wouldn't. No. Sonia too became involved with the IWA, joining Tom on the campaign trail. And while they lobbied the government, groups of volunteers began to restore derelict routes. I have great pleasure in declaring this wire lock reopened to traffic. The battle was being won, and by the 60s the canals had found a new use, leisure. As for Sonia and Tom, they got married. Today the canals have come even further, finding a new lease of life in our cities. 
But again, the future's uncertain. With a cash-strapped government reluctant to cover the costs. The last few years has seen the government repeatedly cut the funding that it gives British Waterways, which controls most of the canal network. Now the organisation faces a multi-million pound hole in its finances. And with more than 2,000 miles of waterway to look after, the situation's serious. It's a huge problem, but it's not an immediate problem. Mm. It's a problem that's there, we need to resolve, but we need to resolve it over a number of years. So what's the solution? Well, we want to transform ourselves from being a public organisation to a charity. And we think that will give us many more opportunities. Not only opportunities to raise more money, mm. but opportunities for the many thousands of passionate enthusiasts who love the canals mm. to become more engaged. For Sonia, it's alarming to see the canal network she fought so hard for in trouble again. She says this time it can't be left to rot. I think it absolutely has to have a future because I think what has been done so far is priceless.